Hey friend, welcome back to RGD Gaming, least toxic, most fun computer all gaming. And welcome to the first video in my Kaisa series, where we dive so much deeper into champions than any other channel even considers doing. I'm going to teach you how to play Kaisa with early game supports, late game supports, against early game bot lanes, late game bot lane matchups, scaling teams, and basically every single situation you can imagine with Kaisa. No channel does anything remotely like this. So this is the first video in the series. Make sure that you catch all of them. And by the time you're done, you're going to be a pro at Kai'Sa and able to crush even in solo queue. I'm going to help to correct some misconceptions about Kai'Sa, teach you the magic of her engage, which is a thing of beauty, I might say, and how to close out games with her. I bet the last part about closing out games isn't exactly what you think it will be. Maybe it is. You'll have to stick around and find out. Let's take a quick pause and talk about builds. I know, I know, the AP version of Kai'Sa is better, but hear me out. This is a guide for solo queue, and if you haven't played solo queue in a minute, either watch my video about the mental state of Wild Rift, or play through games and you will quickly find out how weak the mental game is in solo queue. I actually agree, the AP version is better, but it has one massive flaw when you're playing by yourself. It's a scaling build, and so if you don't get lucky early on, the damage isn't as strong as the AD version early and you will fall a little bit behind, which is fine in the scaling comp or in scaling builds, but in solo queue, people cannot handle when their ADC falls behind and it's one of the worst things you can do to the morale of the team. I tried the AP version and it just took too long to scale for most people to emotionally handle in solo queue. So I go with the AD version. I start out with Essence Reaver, I build Boots next, usually Boots of Dynamism, but it depends. I might go for the um, Omnivamp Boots, depending on the enemy comp, if Armor Pen doesn't really make sense. My next item is often Storm Razor, so that way I can slow anybody who wants to engage. And then I might build Mortal Reminder next, I might build the fourth item. It really depends on the enemy comp and how much tank they have. There's also a chance I might go third item collector if the enemy is very squishy and just going to die to that type of damage and armor penetration is going to be good in that situation. And I'm almost always going to be going stasis enchant for my enchantments. As far as runes, I like conqueror, brutal, coup de gras is one that I'll change out depending on the enemy comp. I might go giant slayer if the enemies have a lot of HP, and then Bloodline for my last one. Um, and then I usually go Bone Plating. There's a chance I could switch out Bone Plating if they don't really have engaged comps where you don't get the three abilities or attacks to do the damage to Bone Plating. And what I would probably switch it out with is something like or vital, or I'm sorry, Perseverance if I need the Tenacity, and then I might also go Nullifying Orb. As far as spells, I almost always run Exhaust. If the enemy team has a comp in which they aren't going to be chasing me down, but they can do a lot of damage, um, then I will switch that out with Barrier. So this is my overall comp. If I could pick the life that I want, this would be my build, and I would go AP Misfortune, because again, I agree it's the strongest. It's just in solo queue, you are in a race against the clock to get ahead of the enemy ADC and start doing damage before your team starts going GG and tries to forfeit. Here comes the first misconception about Kaisa, and it's going to be that she is very weak early on in the game. And the answer is she kind of is, but she has a really strong engage, and you saw it right there with Leona. As soon as Leona lands her dive, I'm third ability in, using my first ability again, and that way we're getting a ton of burst damage onto them. Traditionally against Misfortune and Seraphin, we should really not be able to fight them because there's a lot of burst damage there against us and if they get the damage onto me, I would die. But we were fortunate in that Leona was able to land a good hook and then stun and then I'm able to come in and follow up and there you actually saw us do it again. And so now we have this Misfortune kind of on the ropes, let's see, and Leona lands it again and I'm able to third ability in, first ability, finish off with my second ability. 
And so when you have an engaged support, and this is one of the things also that's beautiful about Kaisa is she can sit back and scale fine, but when you have somebody like a Leona, a Thresh, even I have a video coming out with just the most beautiful engages on Rakan, um, you can go in with them, get that burst damage. You don't really want to extend the fights against somebody like, let's say, even against a Misfortune and a Seraphim. As soon as they can get their damage off on me, I'm going to be in a bad spot, and they should really be targeting me in those fights and not Leona. But for that initial engage, you can get in there, get that burst damage, and have a really good trade go off. This is what makes Kai'Sa so dynamic and able to be picked in solo queue as a blind pick and with any support because she can engage when necessary and she can also hang back and she scales like a truck. The next misconception is that because Kai'Sa is a scaling champion, you can't be aggressive. Here I have a situation where I'm 1v1 with a misfortune. I want to be aggressive. I can beat misfortune in a 1v1 because her ability or her Q is aimed. Her ultimate is aimed, and I can either use my third ability to get around it, and I can use my ultimate to get around her ultimate as well. So she's really in a bad spot when she's going 1v1 against me. So be aggressive in situations in which you can take advantage of the enemy team and get kills. The other thing is her ultimate is crazy. You saw it there. I dashed all the way through a huge wall and was able to get a kill on Seraphin with, again, my burst damage, my third ability and my first ability, and I was able to blow Seraphin up. Okay, you have one lane. You're the strongest person on the map. Now you need to close out this game. Now, what most people do is they just go bananas and they run around the map and they take bad fights and they get into weird spots. What I'm going to do is I'm going to still farm my waves. I'm going to take jungle camps and when fights happen, I am not going to just lose my mind and jump into the enemy backline because I have an ultimate that allows me to do that. Okay, watch my positioning here. I am not going to just run in. I see Misfortune. I'm not going for her. Now, in order for Yon to get me, he has to engage three of us. And so he goes down. And so here's Vi. I'm letting Aatrox and Leona go in. I'm staying back. Vi wastes her ultimate on Leona. And now has no ultimate to use on me. And has to run at me with a Lux and a Leona. And so I'm hanging out on the back line. Staying safe. And when the enemy engages on me, they're not just engaging right onto me, they're engaging onto me and at least one other person, and in those two cases, two other people. Just because you have the ultimate that you can run the back line doesn't mean you should be doing that, and just because you're the strongest person on the map doesn't mean you can't die. So even though you're fed, what you really need to do is stay in the back line, put out tons of damage, which you're capable of doing, and when somebody engages on you, stay safe, stay back, and stay with your teammates. Don't just run in blindly just because you think you're the strongest one on the map. You're not going to win games that way. The way you close out matches is you don't die, you stay alive, and when you get out of those fights that you win and you get a kill or two, you go around, you farm waves again, and you also farm enemy camps as well as your own jungle camps. So that way you can stay in the lead, and that's how you're going to close out more games as Kai'Sa and even as any ADC. Thanks for watching. Hopefully I see you on the rift. GG.